Pinot Black, folks, more truth. And basically, you've seen where we're at, and you know where we're at. I added up there. You can back up the video and check it out. Because basically, what we're going to do is, I guess I'm going to pop down a little bit on size here. And then we will go ahead and watch, not the sun, but Super Giants activity. Because basically, I think I'm making it go down. Okay. Nope, making it come up like I basically wanted to, I guess. So here we go. And as you can see, uh, we have cloud cover. So as it gets up a little higher, you're going to see that the idea that, like everybody's been mailing me, it's like, damn, Pino, you've been right. And basically, yeah, because my eyes don't lie to me. The idea that you see there right there, that it's only like a half. And as it comes up, it rotates around and so forth and so on. And there's so much light on the object as you see how it's, you can see you, you're not blind. As a matter of fact, I'll pump it up to 200% real fast, and you can see how the brightness of the star that is still burning bright, which basically you think it's the sun, but absolutely it's not. The sun does not come up, and it's not that small. And actually, we, there is argument scientific on this size. Okay, yes, our sun might be a little bit bigger than this. Okay, but this is smaller than the sun, and it's probably. Uh, I'm not even going to get into names but because I've already basically given you guys, watch all my videos, and basically, basically we know when I talk about Rigel, Kentaurus, A or B, and all the other objects in the Supergiants, we are knowing what we're talking about because we will step, okay, as you see it forward, the brightness of that sun overlaps and takes away that dark object that rotates around the sun, and we've proved in the past that it rotates around the sun it is a sun okay i apologize when i say b sun because right now folks this is not the sun coming up now everybody's been watching these down there and they're going because they see the little bit of cloud cover that uh gives another filter so that the idea that even the objects that are in front of the sun you end up seeing it from a filtered perspective uh as you see that dark little object pops up behind the deal and uh you see it rotate there Okay, you can see it rotating, and then uh, get more of the rotation, and then we will go up, and then you see that it, there, it does have a narrow side to it, because basically the only thing that's blocking anything down is, yes, I admit the cloud cover, but see how this is burning through the cloud cover. And you can see that the idea that even though we are probably looking at two stars, okay, and possibly even three, and it is super giants, okay, because you have this main belt of a small sun there, you have this main belt of a sun there, and this main belt of a sun there. Either that or it is such the, the smallness of like at least under half the size of the sun that when it goes through the clouds, that it gets filtered. And yes, this is more than likely radioactive. If the sun die, whenever the sun in billions of years or whatever, and there is data to show that the scientists think they've got it figured out when it would die out, the sun, it would be like what we are seeing there. Because this is a dead sun. Okay? It is a planet. That's what the Earth was at one time or other. Okay? Now, as you can see also, it's the pos it's, we have seen factually okay that it comes up and as it comes up either earth's rotation or that object or both and how we rifle through space as this goes it was larger and then smaller and then larger so it's either just the rotation of that object which is basically a dead star a future earth planet uh, of some sorts or some planet now, whether it have the atmosphere of Earth, our secret is, like I've always been telling everybody, is the idea that we need to put trees on something like Titan. If you see the rock formations on Titan, it's the only thing that's even close to Earth as far, and it's basically a moon of Saturn, which it's somewhat in a respectable, especially when we're getting hotter here on Earth, that isn't a more of a respectable, would possibly become or is already in a warm belt area enough like how Earth hides out, okay? As you see this hideaway, and basically it was going through some cloud cover, folks. And as you'll see, it basically it had that cloud cover there, okay? So it filters and you see stuff, okay? And then, yes, we'll see all this that we originally saw. And basically, you can know and look at the clock that the sun is coming up down here or in the east as this was going away, 
okay, and going across to the northern hemispheres, okay, all over the world, and it gets hidden by the sun because at six something, <coughs> and as I go back here, and at five something, somewhere around in this period of time, the sun is coming up, okay? But see, this is not the sun, okay? As you see the darkness behind it, and as this goes away, you will see it get brighter because I was going the wrong way. But you'll see it get brighter as it goes away because it gets brighter because the sun is coming up, okay? And now the sun's up, and that little star sun is gone. But you still see the remnants of it as it leaves and goes away, only in Antarctica, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And then you also see that, which I can pump up on that. Basically, that is a hologram, or is it? And that's what we're all trying to figure out. Now, you see as it blends through the clouds, so it would make you believe that the idea that it is possibly one of the dwarfs, okay? And then it follows, because it's pretty unusual that a hologram would go through a cloud like that, okay, and have a cloud in front of it, in front of a hologram, because the, the hologram should pull, make its image all over top of, and as you see it there, it's clear as day, so that very much looks like a dwarf of something, basically a dead star following, and as you see, it even gets a little larger, now that makes it a little bit more for the idea that it is a hologram, but as you see, it's still visible through the cloud cover, okay? So is it a hologram? Very possibly because it's like a disco ball because as we will pop down on size here, we will go back, I think I can bring it back, and we know that it all rotates, and we know that we've seen this rotate around that sun before, okay? And as you see, it does a zigzag of some sorts as it comes across the sky. Or, factually, it is rotating. And also you get that hologram there in front, but it's sure a solid looking one when it comes up from behind. And as you see, the sun covers up and over it and it's no blotch of no camera. Those cameras, scientifically, give them a clear shot of what the heck is coming by every day. It's their experiments. Okay, and there you get the rotation, as you see there, of that object next to that other object that's not the flipping sun. Okay, and then the hologram, or, because you can see that starting to build there, I'll back up a couple frames, and you'll see that there. So is it just a hologram? Now, right there you can see it, and then as we step away, and it goes away, then you get that way low, bam, like that. So that sure the hell looks like a dwarf out there. And we know that if you've watched my last videos, and basically... So what I'm going to show you here real fast is basically what would be with a huge, uh, which a, with an HMO, a, hu a huge mass object. And basically, it's the holy moly video of mine is what you have to go watch, okay? And the holy moly video basically shows you NASA straight out telling you that these objects are out there, okay? Now, there is some effort by people out there to make it look as if though that this object is coming through. Okay? Possibilities. Because there are heavy mass objects out there and they're known to be going through uh, our Milky Way galaxy. Okay? Because the sun is in the supergiants. The sun is in the well right there. And then all of these other objects out here is I will basically uh, yeah, it's still progressing. So the idea that I'm just going to basically speed us through this telemetry. And this is what's got basically made the speech more than likely because no matter who would be in the office, no matter wh what number of scientists, because there's been, I'm sure, and on a daily basis, I'm sure that there's some kind of, what's the new take? Put the hounds out. Find out what's going on. Because it's the internal guts of G.O.D, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, because... Now, the guy's got some stuff that, and basically there's been uh, people, scientists, all through the years, because there is dark stuff out there that we don't see. Now, here's some more material, basically, of 
and you basically have to take it for what you're seeing for names here. And I really do appreciate the guy that made this video up and he put standard YouTube on it. So it's just the idea that you can go to my holy moly and you, when you type that in for search, you type in and tell anybody that you want to look at it. You put it in with large uh, and then you basically can go to those object numbers. Now NASA is going to end up changing the name of those objects, okay? Because of my video, more than likely, and because of other people's videos, okay? Everything, as far as we always are concerned about something, now it is the odds of something hitting Earth, but then the odds of Earth hitting material that's left in a area, plus also the CME action that we keep on telling you about, is something to be concerned about, okay? Uh, yeah, maybe more, because there's more, probably more planets out there. Who knows how much more mass of stuff is out there than uh, stars? We don't really know. Now, this HMO that he keeps on checking out, matching up, and so forth through this telemetry, it's just basically any mass object that would be coming along with what basically when my sound got stolen from what other people consider is going to be coming across and could be co possibly end up, and as this guy's got some videos here, and I'll put his tag on and so forth and so on because I'm promoting him. Because, but it's basically, he does research just like any JPL or anything like that's going to do is the idea where is this stuff going to go? Where is Earth going to go? And that's what we are in space, big bangs. I would say that the Earth is safe as hell because, like I always say, that we are like a rabbit hiding out in a foxhole because where the temperature is right, it wouldn't hurt us at all to go to a little bit warmer temperature. The sun's doing that for us now. We have modern-day technology that we know that HARP and weather modification does exist. You can go to anybody that's been around at Dutch for a long time. It all exists. We have been playing with the weather ever since we stole the information or whoever stole the information. And when I say we, I didn't personally do it. But uh, Tesla was a very intelligent man, and basically a lot of scientists learned a lot of stuff from his discovery of basically investigating stuff that's happened basically to from CME action and so forth with electrical current from static from your air from outer space and he was able to power the Chicago World's Fair which is basically called like I believe it was the Columbian Exposition or whatever that I basically showed you information on and as we go through this sub brown dwarfs information as you notice they put a blur on it so that you can't read it now he originally put this on here and I believe this was originally clear enough to be able to be read now I want to stress the fact that the idea that I always tell everybody the idea that Earth is like a rabbit in a hole hiding out, okay? Now, as we go through this, and, and basically you see there that there's all kinds of stuff, and we know people don't have to repeat to me that stuff is hella out there in space, okay, a long ways away, okay, i.e. this stuff down here, okay, is way far away in space. All the supergiant stuff is way far away in space. But the idea that there is stuff out in the solar systems in the universe is because the idea that we've always, I think, brought up or whatever, educated there might be just one solar, and it's not. More than likely, space is almost probably infinite, okay? Uh, this stuff is hella far out there. This is the huge, uh, he calls it an HMO, huge mass object, and there's lots of huge mass objects out there, and then NASA doesn't let you know the names of them and so forth and so on. Okay, so then he goes through these projections and so forth, and you see this stuff's all out there and everything that I've always been showing you, it's out there. The idea of something hitting Earth? No. The idea of us going through debris on Earth? Quite possibly. So the most important thing is that all this stuff is hella far away from Earth. Okay? And these are our planets that we know around us. Okay? This here is basically telling you that the idea that Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, okay, and Jupiter and Saturn are way the hell out here. Okay? There's other two planets close to us there that's more than likely maybe Mercury or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Okay? The idea that tons of this stuff is way hell far away from us. Okay? What every astronomer is not going to tell you is the idea that when we come around by Uranus, that's the dark sides of, it, of space, ladies and gentlemen. And the idea that when we come around the 365 days of the year and everything like that, as we see Earth here, and this is our path on the red line, is the idea that what is in the dark that's got moved around by heavy mass objects that we don't know about. So no matter what, we've got this stuff in the supergiants, and this is way early before even the AM hour, okay? And as you can see, it goes low to us, and then comes back up.
Okay? It's not the sun. Maybe even some political next. 